Okay, let's talk a little bit about collisions. So collisions are about systems of particles, systems of particles. And in general, you can have a whole lot of particles. You can have a whole lot of particles come zooming towards each other and, you know, they head towards a point and then maybe afterwards they're all ricocheting in different directions. But let's just consider a, a one-dimensional collision right now. So let's consider the case where you have an object that is traveling with some speed v, and it has some mass m, and it's going to hit a stationary object with the same mass m. And so we said that momentum, the total momentum of this system, where the system is the two particles, the total momentum of this system is conserved, right? So if we talk about, if we have objects one and two, that means that the total momentum of one and two beforehand, the sum of the momenta one and two beforehand, before anything happens, is equal to the momentum afterwards. Oops. Let's do this. Sum of momentum before, there we go is equal to the sum of momentum after. So beforehand, we have m times v that was given, plus 0. And afterwards, we'll have an m, let's call it v1 after, plus m v2 after. And I want you to notice that there's actually a lot of things here that could, you know, satisfy conservation of momentum. I mean, maybe, right, maybe um, one of them moves backwards. Number one, let's say, moves backwards with a 2 times V, and one of them moves forward with a 3 times V. The sum of those two things, so M, you know, 2V in the backwards direction plus M3V in the positive direction does indeed equal MV. So there's lots of things that could happen. Now, you may know that that's not one thing that does happen. And the reason is because that doesn't conserve energy. So when we're talking about these problems, we're often talking about momentum and energy together. So one thing that can happen is that the two things stick together. The two things stick together. So... If the two things stick together, so let's change colors here. So if they stick together, stick together, then the after is going to be equal to M plus M plus the V that they have, let's call it V12, right, afterwards. The two of them, like, mush together into a common ball, and head off in some new speed v12. And what is that new speed? Well, by conservation of momentum, that v12 has to be equal to v12 must be equal to one half because the m's cancel, so that has to be equal to one half v. But let's check the energy. Now let's check energy, kinetic energy. Okay, beforehand. K before was one half m v squared. K afterwards is one half. Now there's two m's stuck together, m and m, and they have a one half v squared. That's their final velocity. Well, when you do that problem out, you find that you then so the two and the one half cancel and you get a one-fourth mv squared. Check out what happened. You had a one-half mv squared to start with, and by the end of it, you've lost half your energy. You've lost half of your energy. This particular problem is called completely inelastic. where energy is lost. Elastic collisions mean that not just momentum is conserved, 
because the momentum of that system is always conserved, but it also means that the mechanical energy is also conserved. Mechanical energy is conserved. Completely inelastic is when they stick together. Inelastic is just, well, mechanical energy is not conserved. So let's figure out what happens um, if energy is conserved. If energy is conserved, then we have the, so let's switch to green for conservation of energy for an elastic collision where mechanical energy is conserved. The conservation of momentum equation is still good we also then have a conservation of energy. One-half mv squared is equal to one-half mv1 squared plus one-half mv2 squared. That's also true. So we have two equations and two unknowns. You can solve for v1 and v2 here. And you get one of two equations. Either they don't hit, and M just sits, M1, or sorry, number two just sits there, and number one sails on through. But the other one is that number one sits there, and V1 final is equal to zero. Number two, after the collision, heads off with the speed that V1 had to begin with. V2 is just V. So if you've played pool, you know that this happens. You can have ball one come, hits ball two at rest, and then ball one stops. And ball two heads off with the same speed, and I guess I should draw the vector the same length, I got excited, with the same speed that V1 had coming in. So that's another solution there, and that's the solution that, unlike completely inelastic, conserves both momentum and kinetic energy. Energy is conserved. And that's it.